Hey, it's Metagosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. This is my physiology playlist. In the previous videos, we have talked about the autonomic nervous system in great detail. Today, it's just a quick review in case your exam is tomorrow or something. So this is how we roll in this playlist. The first video is always an introduction about a subject. And then we talk about the subject in the following videos. And then the last one is a review. We did the same thing with the autonomic nervous system. We had an introduction that was video number 26. Today is video number 40, a review of the autonomic nervous system. And then the next topic is going to be nerve physiology and the action potential. We will go very fast in this video. If you have any problems or you need an explanation for anything, go to the previous videos, please. Nervous system, central and peripheral, central, brain and spinal cord, peripheral, cranial nerves, spinal nerves. The structural unit is the neuron, functional unit is the reflex arc. Some nerves are sensory, others are motor, others are mixed. Autonomic is always motor, autonomic is never sensory. So what do we mean by a mixed nerve? A mixed nerve has motor and sensory always. Sometimes we also have autonomic. Dr. Stephen Covey said, take control of that which you can control. What he did not talk about was your autonomic nervous system because your autonomic nervous system is stuff that you cannot control. Autonomic nervous system has three members, sympathetic, parasympathetic, and enteric. Here is your spinal cord. You draw a line in the sand. Anything in front is motor. Anything behind is sensory with few exceptions. Look at autonomic. I've told you it's always motor, never sensory. And that's why it starts at the lateral horn cell in front of the line because it's motor. And then you go together with the somatic fibers. This is the ventral ramus. This is the dorsal ramus. And if you say otherwise, you are an ignoramus. Whether you're sympathetic or parasympathetic, you start at the lateral horn cell and then you go at the ventral root or ventral ramus and then you go to the spinal nerve, which is always mixed. What does that mean? It always has motor fibers plus sensory fibers and sometimes autonomic fibers in addition. The anterior horn cell, however, is for somatic motor fibers. Upper motor neuron is going to come and relay here and then the lower motor neuron is going to exit like this. A collection of somas in the central nervous system is a nucleus. In the peripheral nervous system is a ganglion. A collection of axons in the central nervous system is a tract. In the peripheral, it's a nerve. What's a ganglion? A collection of somas outside the central nervous system, inside the peripheral nervous system. And we have two types, spinal ganglion and autonomic ganglia. Spinal is sensory somatic. However, autonomic is motor and autonomic. Your axon has myelin sheath sometimes, but it always has neural mill sheath. When it has a myelin sheath, it's myelinated. Could be A fibers or B fibers. Which one is faster? Of course, A, because they are thicker. Cool. How about C fibers? Unmyelinated. Thin and unmyelinated. The worst of the worst. What's in the ventral ramus? We have motor somatic fibers and motor autonomic fibers. What's the difference? Motor somatic fibers, like you're running from a tiger, these are really important for survival. We cannot waste time relaying in a stupid ganglia. Therefore, we'll continue as is. However, autonomic fibers can wait. Preganglionic autonomic, then you have a ganglion, then you have postganglionic autonomic fibers. Not just one, but about 8 to 15 per ganglion. Preganglionic fibers are of the B type. They are thin but myelinated. The postganglionic C type, thin and unmyelinated. All of the preganglionic fibers are cholinergic. What does that mean? They secrete acetylcholine. But the postganglionic, it depends. If you're parasympathetic, you'll secrete acetylcholine, therefore cholinergic. If you're sympathetic, you'll secrete norepinephrine, therefore adrenergic. What's the function of a ganglion? It's a distribution center, a relay station for regulation, so that for every one preganglionic fiber that comes in, about 8 to 15 postganglionic fibers will exit. It's like an Amazon distribution center. Your nervous system came from the ectoderm, specifically the neuroectoderm. Neural tube gave rise to central nervous system and the cells that are helping the central nervous system. Neural crest gives rise to the peripheral nervous system, the cells that help the peripheral nervous system, and the adrenal medulla because it's a modified ganglion. What was the definition of the ganglion again? A collection of somas in the peripheral nervous system. No shock. 
The neural tube will be your central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, neural crest, peripheral nervous system and adrenal medulla, surface ectoderm for the epidermis of the skin. How about the dermis? The dermis is mesoderm, shut up. The notochord, which is part of the mesoderm, will become the nucleus pulposus inside the intervertebral disc inside that piece of cartilage. What makes Lionel Messi great, what makes a pianist so cool, is that they have fine movements. How do they get it? Give them the best fibers ever. A-alpha. These are thick and myelinated, and they are so fast, and they cannot waste time relaying in a stupid ganglion. Somatic fibers, Lionel Messi, just one type. Somatic, autonomic, we have sympathetic and parasympathetic. Lionel Messi has one function in life, to supply his skeletal muscles. Autonomic fibers, it depends. We can supply muscles and glands. So we have two targets. Each target is subdivided into two sub-targets. Cardiac muscle, smooth muscle. And how the glands? Exocrine, endocrine. Somatic has one function, to contract these skeletal muscles. Autonomic, it depends. I can increase your heart rate, decrease your heart rate. Increase your gastric secretion, decrease your gastric secretion. Somatic has one type of fibers, the best, A-alpha. That's why Leonin Messi is so cool. Autonomic, two fibers. We have B, preganglionic, and C, postganglionic. Somatic has one A friend because we do not have time to waste. Relaying in a stupid ganglia, but autonomic, we have two A friends, preganglionic and postganglionic. Somatic, one neurotransmitter, always acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. Autonomic, two types. We have acetylcholine and norepinephrine. Somatic is voluntary, autonomic is not. Somatic is an operator, autonomic is a core who cares. Somatic and tear horn cell, autonomic lateral horn cell because somatic has to exit faster because we are running from a tiger. This is important for survival. It has to be anterior, closer to the ventral exit from the spinal cord. Somatic fibers are A alpha, thick, myelinated, the fastest of the fastest. Autonomic are slower, so B or C. Both of them are thin, B is myelinated, C is not. Preganglionic fibers are B, they are myelinated, myelin appears white, that's why we call them the white rami communicans. Postganglionic are C fibers, non myelinated, we call them the gray rami communicans. Sympathetic, thoracolumbar, parasympathetic, craniosacral, sympathetic ganglia are either paravertebral or prevertebral, parasympathetic are either terminal ganglia or other ganglia. Sympathetic is fight-flight, para is rest and digest. Sympathetic is catabolic, parasympathetic is anabolic. Let's talk about the sympathetic response. You're running from a tiger, fight, flight, break down the glycogen into glucose so that I can burn it and get some energy. Break down the fat into free fatty acids so that I can burn them into energy. Dilate my bronchi so that I can breathe, increase all of my cardiac properties. Constrict all my vessels so that I do not bleed, but vasodilate the vessels to my heart and skeletal muscles, please. Elevate my upper eyelid, dilate my pupil, squeeze the spleen into oblivion, increase my hematocrit. Release epinephrine nor epinephrine from the adrenal medulla, renin from the kidney, sympathetic, shoot, S with the S, but the para with the P will point with the P, point means erection. Sympathetic, origin, lateral horn cell, where exactly thoracolumbar from T1 all the way up to L2 or L3, relay, lateral ganglia or collateral ganglia, reach, I'm gonna reach your head and neck. Thorax, abdomen, pelvis. When I reach the abdomen, I'm called the greater splanchnic nerve. In the pelvis, I'm the lesser splanchnic nerve. Parasympathetic, however, origin is craniosacral. What do you mean by cranio? Cranial nerves, 3, 7, 9, and 10, or 1973, 3, 7, 9, 10. How about sacral? S, 2, 3, and 4. The pelvic splanchnic nerve or the pelvic nerve. Relay in terminal ganglion embedded in the wall of the organ or other ganglia such as ciliary, submandibular, sphenopalatine, or otic. Reach everywhere that has been reached by the sympathetic except skeletal muscle vessels, skin, sweat glands, spleen, and suprarenal glands. These have sympathetic supply but no parasympathetic whatsoever. Origin relay and functions of sympathetic were discussed before. Don't forget Horner syndrome. Where you get epsilateral, unilateral ptosis, meiosis, and hydrosis. When you're running from a tiger, I need to shift blood from your skin and into your vital organs. How do you do this? I need to vasoconstrict and vasodilate. Vasoconstrict vessels in your skin. This is alpha 1. Vasodilate vessels near your heart and skeletal muscles. This is beta 2. Which one is more important? The dilation, baby. Sympathetic dilate my pupil. Parasympathetic constrict my pupil. Long ciliary nerve is sympathetic. Short ciliary nerves are parasympathetic. 
The sympathetic adrenergic nerve terminus secretes noradrenaline only. Never adrenaline. Why not? I do not have the PNMT enzyme, but the adrenal medulla has that enzyme. That's why she is capable of secreting norepi and epi because she has the enzyme. Adrenal medulla has the enzyme. Nerve terminus doesn't have the enzyme. What's the name of the enzyme? Phenylethanolamine and methyltransferase. The difference between acetylcholine and norepinephrine is very important. Pause and review. All of your somatic fibers are cholinergic. They secrete acetylcholine at the N sub M at the neuromuscular junction. Preganglionic parasympathetic acetylcholine. Preganglionic sympathetic acetylcholine. These are cholinergic. What's the receptor? N sub N. And then the postganglionic. If you are parasympathetic, acetylcholine. If you are sympathetic, norepinephrine receptors. If you are parasympathetic, muscarinic receptors. If you are sympathetic, adrenergic receptors. There is one exception, sweat gland. Yes, they receive sympathetic fibers, but that fiber secrete acetylcholine even though it is sympathetic. Adrenal medulla is a modified ganglion. Treat her like a ganglion, N sub N, with preganglionic fiber, but there is no postganglionic because the postganglionic is just hormones secreted in the blood, no postganglionic nerve fibers whatsoever. Somatic fibers release acetylcholine onto N sub M receptors. Preganglionic autonomic release acetylcholine onto N sub N receptors. Postganglionic parasympathetic release acetylcholine onto muscarinic receptors. Postganglionic sympathetic release norepinephrine onto alpha and beta adrenergic receptors. Any, any parasympathetic fiber will always release acetylcholine, no exception. But just because you see acetylcholine doesn't necessarily mean it's a parasympathetic fiber. It could be a somatic fiber, a preganglionic sympathetic, or a postganglionic sympathetic to the sweat glands. These are your cholinergic fibers, these are your adrenergic fibers. How many cholinergic receptors do you know? I know two types. Each has got two sites. Nicotinic, we have N sub M and N sub N. Muscarinic, we have the muscarinic for the parasympathetic, the muscarinic for the sympathetic to the sweat gland. Now we have talked about the sympathetic. Let's talk about the parasympathetic. This is anabolic, energy preservation. So glucose into glycogen, free fatty acids into lipids, bronchoconstriction with increased bronchial secretion, decrease all of your cardiac properties. These are the parasympathetic effects. Pause and review. Don't forget parasympathetic will vasodilate because it's secreted. Where do you think I get the secretions from? From the blood vessel. I better dilate it. Parasympathetic, meiosis and accommodation. What's the name of the receptor? M3, muscarinic, because these fibers will secrete what? Acetylcholine. Where do they get from? They are part of the cranial nerve number three, the oculomotor, starting from the Edinger vestibule nucleus. And then we have preganglionic fibers, these are long, and then your ciliary ganglion, your postganglionic fibers, these are short, until you reach your beautiful constrictor pupillae muscle and ciliary muscle. Constrictor pupillae will constrict the pupil. Ciliary muscle will cause accommodation. This is accommodation for near vision. Control of the autonomic nervous system, limbic system, emotions and behavior. The hypothalamus has all the stats in it. Midbrain, eye, medulla, two vitals and two opposites. Two vitals, cardiovascular center and respiratory center. Two opposites, get it in, swallowing center. Get it out, vomiting center. And then your sacral spinal cord, micturition, defecation, and erection. If I severed the lower end of my spinal cord, I will lose micturition, I will lose defecation, and I will lose erection. I would rather jump in a freaking creek. Your battery receptors are found in the aortic arch and the carotid sinus. Aortic arch, cranial nerve 10. Carotid sinus, cranial nerve 9. If you suffer from hypotension, they will trigger a sympathetic response to raise your blood pressure and back to normal. And the opposite will happen with the opposite. Endocrine control is the juxtaglomerular cell is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Let's say I had a car accident and lost a lot of blood. I will get hypotension. Two things will happen. Number one, triggering baroreceptor leading to a sympathetic response trying to increase my blood pressure and back to normal. Number two, juxtaglomerular cells, renin angiotensin aldosterone system, vasoconstriction with salt water retention, try to increase the blood pressure and back to normal. Alpha 1 is pro-sympathetic function, but alpha 2 is an SOB. Alpha 2 is an anti-sympathetic. It decreases norepinephrine release and therefore decrease all of the sympathetic functions.
Why do we need alpha and beta receptors for the same molecule? Because alpha is excitatory. Beta is usually inhibitory with three exceptions. So alpha will contract the sphincter, beta will relax the wall, both of them will shut your urinary tract because you're running from a tiger. It's not time for urination right now. The bay bay beta is in bay bay battery everywhere except heart hormone metabolism. Alpha-1 is excitatory, it always causes contraction of some kind of muscle. If you have contraction, you gotta be needing calcium, and therefore you gotta be GQ coupled. Alpha-2 is inhibitory, give it GI, because I for inhibitory is gonna decrease cyclic AMP. The opposite is beta, because beta usually is GS, increases cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP will contract your heart muscle, but relax your smooth muscles. All of the following, alpha-1, m1, m3, m5, gq, phospholipase c, ip3, calcium is the hero of contraction, contract everything. And then the betas are gs coupled. Everything here is a, enolate cyclase, atp, cyclic amp, protein kinase a. What's gonna happen? It depends. If your heart muscle, I'll increase contraction. If your smooth muscle, I'll decrease contraction. That's why the heart loves cyclic amp. And that's why your bronchi love cyclic amp. Nor epinephrine works more on the alpha than the beta. Epinephrine works on them both equally. That's why epinephrine is more potent, because it works more on the beta, which is what matters most, because it's in your heart. Beta-1 receptor is the love story for a cardiologist. Beta-2 for a pulmonologist. You have one heart, but two bronchi. B1. Why do we call it 1? Because the most important organ is your heart. Beta 2. Why do we call it 2? Because no, no one cares about your bronchi. How about M1, M2, and M3? We found that one of them is in the brain. Call it M1. M2 is in the heart. Yeah, heart is more important than other organs, but it's less important than the brain. And then M3 in every other organ. So, beta 1, heart. Beta 2, bronchi, and everything else. Beta 3, lipolysis. M1, brain, M2, heart, M3, everything else. And that's some pharmacology for your gluteal region. Methylation at the normal position, N, will give you something valuable, epinephrine. But methylation at the fake position, the zero position, the O position, will give you degradation. Pieces of trash. Similarities between epi and norepi both come from the adrenal medulla, both are hormones, both are chemical transmitters, both are present in the CNS. Here are the differences. Epinephrine cannot be synthesized by the nerve ending because it does not have the PNMT enzyme, nor epinephrine can be found in the sympathetic ending. Both can be released from the medulla. Epinephrine versus norepinephrine. Don't forget, epinephrine is more potent. Now pause and review. Clostridium tetany versus Clostridium botulinum. Pause and review. Cholinergic versus adrenergic. Cholinergic secretes acetylcholine, has three options N sub N receptor, N sub M receptor at the neuromuscular junction, muscarinic receptors at smooth muscles and cardiac muscles. These are skeletal muscles, but these are smooth and cardiac muscles. These are just ganglia and your adrenal medulla because it's a modified ganglion. Adrenergic, we secrete nor adrenaline. And we have two options, alpha receptors or beta receptors. Pharmacology, baby, pause and review. Anything that inhibits the neuromuscular junction is called a neuromuscular blocker. Anything that has curare in it. The old movies about dipping an arrow in a green substance, the green liquid is actually curare. What does it do? Neuromuscular blocker. It causes paralysis of the analysis. Nicotinic receptors work by increasing sodium influx, hashtag depolarization, hashtag activation, and increased action potential. M1, M3, M5, GQ, therefore calcium, therefore contraction. They will contract a smooth muscle or contract a gland acinus. M2 or M4 or GI, they will inhibit everything. M1, M3, and M5, GQ coupled. M2, M4, GI coupled. Look at M1, M3, M5. All of them are GQ. Yeah, I'm either contracting a gland or contracting a muscle. Beautimus. M2, I inhibit something because I'm GI. We have two types of nicotinic receptors. N sub N and N sub M. We can have agonist and we can have antagonist. When we antagonize the N sub M, that's a neuromuscular blocker, anything that has curare in it. A small dose will stimulate, but a large dose will inhibit. Curare is a neuromuscular blocker. Hexamethonium is a ganglion blocker, succinylcholine. Phase one, depolarization and activation. Phase two, 
desensitization and inactivation hashtag paralysis. Some pharmacology for your doozy eyes. Pause and review. Adrenergic medications could be direct acting, indirect acting, or mixed. Let's talk about the mix. Norepinephrine, alpha-1 agonist, alpha-2 and beta-1 also agonist. What's going to happen? Mean arterial blood pressure is going to increase, and therefore you can suffer from reflex bradycardia. Or, since we have some beta-1, I can have tachycardia instead of the bradycardia. Epinephrine is an agonist on everything. Alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, and beta-2. At low dose, epinephrine acts as if it's an isoprotetinol. At high dose, it acts as if it's an epinephrine. The action of epinephrine depends on the dose. Pause and review. Clinical uses of epinephrine and norepinephrine, cardiac arrest, heart block, and adjunct to local anesthetics. If you have hypotension, epinephrine only is used for anaphylaxis or asthma. Do not use norepinephrine for anaphylaxis or status asthmaticus. Epinephrine injections are useful if your problem is histamine. But if your problem is bradykinin, such as hereditary angioedema, epinephrine is not going to help you that much. Alpha-1, GQ, alpha-2, GI, all of the betas, GS. Alpha-1 will constrict arteries, constrict veins, decrease renal release, contract your dilator pupillae muscle, and contract your sphincters and shoot. Alpha-1 will decrease renin release. Beta-1 will increase renin release because renin is a hormone. Alpha-2 is an SOB. It's anti-sympathetic. It's anti-insulin. It's pro-platelet and pro-coagulation and clotting and thrombosis. Ew. Beta-1, GS, increase cyclic AMP, increase all of your cardiac properties and acute hemorrhage secretion and renin release. Beta-2 relaxes your smooth muscles, relaxes the wall of the vessel, relaxes the uterine wall, relaxes your bronchi. Alpha-1 causes medriasis, M3 causes meiosis. Let's talk about drug tracing. If you give me an alpha-1, I'm gonna clamp down on vessel and raise your main arterial pressure. If you give me a beta agonist, it depends. If I'm beta-1, I'll increase your heart rate. Look at this. Look at the distance here. Oh, and look at the distance here. It has shortened. That's why it's a tachycardia. Beta-2 will dilate arteries, dilate veins. When you dilate arteries, you decrease the diastolic. When you dilate veins, you decrease the venous return, you decrease the cardiac output, you decrease the systolic. Both systolic and diastolic have dropped, and therefore, the mean pressure has also dropped. But the pulse pressure has widened. Parasympathetic points, yeah, because it vasodilates. Sympathetic shoots and shrinks, because it vasoconstricts. The differences between sympathetic and parasympathetic couldn't have been more stark, so pause and review. Why are the ganglia of parasympathetic fibers embedded within the wall of the organ? In order to try to prolong the preganglionic, which is B, because B is myelinated and B is better than C. We're trying to prolong B as, as much as we can. Also, because preganglionic parasympathetic release acetylcholine and postganglionic also release acetylcholine, so this is an addition or it could be a synergism. Acetylcholine plus acetylcholine, we will have all kinds of parasympathetic activity, which is cool. We will help each other. The sympathetic, when it tried to do the same thing, it was disastrous. Releasing acetylcholine in the preganglionic, but nor epinephrine in the postganglionic. These two hate each other. The result is antagonism, and that's why the sympathetic cannot embed its ganglia in the target organ. It has to separate the preganglionic from the postganglionic because one secretes acetylcholine and the other releases norepinephrine. And that's why sympathetic fibers have short preganglionic but long postganglionic. Parasympathetic is the exact opposite. With that, I hope that now you can answer all of my 13 autonomic questions. Here is a quick tip for the pro. I've told you that parasympathetic fibers, such as the vagus, release acetylcholine. That's right. But in the stomach, in addition to the acetylcholine, we can actually release GRP. In addition to the acetylcholine, each one has a separate function. And that's one of the reasons we do not give atropine to patients with peptic ulcer. Yes, atropine will block this one, that's true. But look at this, you still have GRP acting on G cells, releasing gastrin, gastrin stimulating your parietal cells, and gastrin stimulating your ACL or enterochromaffin like cell, one of the APUD cells, and this will lead to histamine release, and histamine release will lead to stimulation of the parietal cell, releasing more acid. 
So how do I treat peptic ulcer disease? You have other options. You can give an H2 blocker, such as cimetidine or nitidine famotidine, or you can block the thing that secretes the acid, and this is called the proton pump. Give me a proton pump inhibitor, such as omeprazole. If you like this video, you will like my autonomic pharmacology course even more. Go to medicosisperfectionalist.com and download it today. This will help you master pharmacology so that you can help your patients better. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Thank you for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense. Be safe, stay happy and study hard. Until next time.